Hello and welcome to yet another video review for the Wind in the Willow series. Uh, this week it's school days. Um, without any ado, let's get straight into it. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, one of my favourite episodes, so let's press play. Just pressing play right now. Okay, so, like I say, it is one of my favourite episodes, this. I remember um, this being released on video. Um, on one of those, I think I said last week, one of those watch and play videos. I think I've got one here. So it was, this release here, it was released with Hot Air uh, back in 1988. Uh, and it came with a colouring book um, and pens. And, and uh, Thames Video basically did that for different brands like Sooty, Rainbow, Danger Mouse and He-Man and so on. Um, so yeah, very hard to find now with its book and everything. But yeah, so school days, lovely spring episode um of course it is spring here uh, in 2019 and uh it's a really funny episode no weasels in it but still a funny episode um love those these opening titles um it's just very nostalgic to me this one i just remember um growing up with the um with this episode um i remember i remember us borrowing the video from from a friend and eventually I got a copy. I think we found it in a boot sale somewhere eventually. Um, and it's nice. It's, it's a nice story. It's, it's, it's um, well, you'll see the story. Obviously, it's, um, it's a lovely one where the, the animals sort of come together, or the main characters come together to, um, to realise a problem and to solve a problem. And in, in this case, it's... Um, the school teacher for the youngsters is, is ill, so um, this badger really he has the idea of uh, teaching the youngsters themselves. Uh, Ratty and Mole agree, but of course, as soon as uh, Toad gets um, hears about it, uh, he goes uh, too far as always. But we'll see when we get there. And there's lovely little Billy Rabbit, love this character, um, lovely animation of him sort of brushing, <laughs> brushing himself down there. Always wears that red jumper. It's kind of his trademark look. Um, and voiced by David Jason, a lovely high squeaky voice. <laughs> uh, and Billy Rabbit, I've mentioned before, he became more of a prominent character, kind of from series three onwards. So this is, of course, episode six from series three. Um, bang in the middle of the whole series. Um, uh, there's one of Badger's famous quotes there. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. There's many of those dotted throughout the series, so if I ever do do this book, I'll have to list them all, I think. <laughs> all good facts of life. Good guidance, Badger good. Moles. <laughs> so there's Billy Rabbit talking about Mrs. Gribble, the school teacher. Mrs. Gribble has gone away. And Badger basically says, oh, we can't have this, can't have them doing without school. Um, what's interesting, though, is we don't see Billy Rabbit beyond this opening scene. So we see lots of youngsters throughout the episode, but Billy Rabbit never makes another appearance. But um, I quite like that he's been selected for this, though. He's kind of the main youngster of all of them. All of all. I can't speak today <laughs> of all of them. Beautifully shot as well, so you've got um, a scene with a very tall character and a very little character, and you've got like Billy's point of view and Badger's point of view, and then of course the wide, the wide shots here. <laughs> no school, so you can, <laughs> Badger can't believe this. You know, it won't do. I love this shot of a cake here. The cake looks so real. That cake there. I don't know what was used for that. It's incredible. It crumbly and. I'll have to find out Teach what that is. Teach them ourselves. Badger. I don't think you need us, Badger. You so that's classic filmmaking there. You know, you hear the, the characters' voices, Ratty Mole, before we actually see them. So you see the cups of tea, you see the cake. Already you know it's a cosy atmosphere. Um, Badger's house. And there we are. So the Ratty Mole are kind of, kind of agreeing with Badger. They're kind of going along with it. And of course Toad arrives now. And straight away we've got energy, colour. 
And the, the music, interestingly, is um, a track called Silent Comedy, um, which is unreleased, but I do have it on CD. It's um, always used whenever Toad comes on the scene. It's a classic Toad track. <laughs> The, um, animation here. I should check who's directing this. I do believe it's, yes, it is Jackie Cockle. So, uh, Jackie Cockle, one of the most regular directors for the series, and uh, of course, she had Sue Pew animating, and of course, Paul Berry. So Paul Berry doing so um, most of the time, I believe. <laughs> and you can tell it's Paul Berry's animation, he's got such a a trademark look to his, to his animation, so clear, so uncluttered, really pushed Toad's eyes and expressions. And very clear poses, you can see as we get into each pose, it's very beautifully sort of slowed into each pose and then you hold it, but there's still something else going on. Even when he's thinking here, you can see the eyes blinking away, he's thinking. <laughs> And don't mean to go on about Toad, yeah, he's probably the most popular character of all, but the other characters are just as wonderful, I mean, puppet-wise and animation-wise, the way they walk, the way they behave. So this is a classic Wind in the Willows sort of scene, isn't it? The four of them discussing something, Toad making a fool of himself, the other three trying to, <laughs> trying to keep Toad level-headed. And... <laughs> That's typical yes, toad, so I'm a sort of school for them, even though Badger's all already, well, they've all kind of explained that. And here we go, here's Toad now getting into a craze, so we're building up to this, this idea. Brian Truman, I spoke to him when he wrote this, he always refers to this, he remembers this. Yeah, so. And he, and he got that from real life, there was a story with um, someone who knew where you know, they were a headmaster, but, but no, he would refer to him and say, no, the high master. So Toad always goes a step further. Headmaster, no, that's not good enough. High master, no, he says, much better written to it. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed then, he said, Mr. Toad, M.A. M.A., as we know, is master of art, but... Um, and Ratty, under his breath, just mumbled, muffled animal. <laughs> and again, that's uh, Brian Schumann making use of the... Actor, character actor Peter Sallis. So, um, so here we go. So now we have a nice montage, really, of each of the characters teaching, um, teaching the youngsters. So we start with Mole. Why not? Yeah, nice to start with Mole. Um, so, and Mole's teaching them about the history of his ancestors, and it's interesting because we think, well, Mole is such a gentle, inquisitive sort of innocent fellow, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got a gentle life, very easy going, simple life, you could say, and here Mole's actually revealing that he's got quite a history in his, in his ancestors, and we believe it's all true, we don't believe it's a story, we do believe it to be true, and of course we know Mole has a, quite a, a famous cousin, Oberon Mole, famous literary cousin, um, and here we have the start of, you know, we suspect there's a problem here. So there's a field mouse who's left Mr. Toad and gone, he wants to be taught by Mr. Mole. So already we're thinking, why is this? And very appropriately, we go from Mole to Toad. And Toad, of course, is getting everything completely wrong. <laughs> So the hedgehog, we, we, we a very um, a bright young hedgehog, is correcting Toad at every point. Um, and I love Toad's outfit, his, his um, teacher's or tutor's headmaster's outfit, really, isn't it? It's um, a motorboard. Um, and uh, yeah, that still exists. That's in the archives. I, I borrowed it for a while. I, I looked at it. And, um, what's interesting is I. I was looking at this and studying it uh, when I got my MA and the colours happened to be the same. So Toad's purple, as you can see there, um, was the same colour as mine. What a coincidence. <laughs> the rhyme that longer. So he's saying the ocean green because he's trying to make it rhyme with the year and he's got the year on. 
And we got that same music again, as I mentioned before, silent comedy in the background. And this episode, of course, is full of comedy, full of funny, witty lines. <laughs> Lovely animation again, the toad. Just then when he said English literature, you know, David Jones was speaking out really fast. And, um, you know, of course, when you do lip sync, you need to brush over words. David Jason would slow his words occasionally, but toad often pronounces his words very clearly as well. So you, as an animator, you've got to really listen to the way that line is delivered. And when a phrase like that is, is delivered very quickly, you don't necessarily want the mouth up and, you know, open and close very, very quickly because it's too much, it's too erratic, and um, it wouldn't happen like that in real life. So you've got to phrase it, you've got to find those those words that blend into each other and which words you need to sort of brush over in the animation because they're brushed over in the, um, in the um, dialogue, the soundtrack. So here we are with Badger, and interestingly, I said Billy Rabbit doesn't pop up again, but that is very clearly the Billy Rabbit puppet, uh, a female rabbit that we don't see again at any other point in the series um but a lovely little character you know i love i love her little spectacles her little hat sort of tilted so the hat kind of balanced on one of the ears and we kind of get a hint of the other ear there <laughs> and i learned i learned something here it's really interesting how badger's talking about the curriculum and how the word curriculum came about and Badger always refers to Latin and how Toad needs to know his Latin. <laughs> and I think that's just a hangover from Edwardian England in those days. I'm sure Latin would have been taught in schools then. Um, oh, we've got Portly there, running around, a little hat there. Otter's son, of course. Now, Portly pops up occasionally in the series, a lovely little character. Um, featured very heavily in a couple of episodes in Series 1. And is the centre of the episode of Pi The Pipe at the Gates of Dawn, which I will view in the summer, because it's a summer episode. Um, I love the animation of Badger when he raises one eyebrow. So then, he, that word Canary, Carreri, rather, he rises, raises his eyebrow just to the right point. There. And again, that's listening to dialogue, lip sync, understanding the soundtrack. There's a, another youngster there keeps scratching. She's, she's got a mighty niche. That one sitting next to Portly there with her arms. Sort of He's just sort of sitting there listening. Got a scratch there, see? And they all look at her. <laughs> I love touches like that. You know, little things that maybe the director didn't even think of and the animator would have put in. Just, you don't know. Sometimes the director says exactly what they want. And, you know, the animators try and deliver that as best they can. But uh, it's much nicer when the animator has more freedom you know i certainly have that in all the shows i've worked on um, so and finally we're of course with ratty and ratty of course is teaching the youngsters about what he loves about rowing about boats um, i'm sure ratty's enjoying every minute of this <laughs> sharing his passion of boating allowing them to kind of sit in his boat and understand about he's basically talking about levers so how oars are actually levers. And of course, this hedgehog, you've seen the hedgehog before, we, uh, toes. we saw a leave toad all before, and she decided to go to Ratty. And we'll see in a moment, another one joins Ratty. <laughs> and this music, if you can hear it, it's um, a track called Snakes and Ladders. And there are two versions of that, both of which I do have on CD, but again, unreleased, unreleased properly. Um, they're lovely little pieces in their own right, you know, they're just very jolly, um, really good melody. Um, you know, sometimes music in any TV series can get drastically overlooked, but it's so important in progressing the story and setting the mood, setting the scene. And this piece I always associate with youngsters, it's got a very kind of, I mean even the title suggests that, Snakes and Ladders, like a game, um, associated with with, with playing and uh, having fun. <laughs> the one youngster who isn't saying anything. <laughs> He's just like not really with it. But, uh, He's kind of sort of letting the others speak for him. And here we go. Here's the other one. The other Phil Mouse we saw earlier. That toad. Toad's horse. Yes, sir. Well, why, I'd 
got you there. I, I was there, Mr. Rat, but he's doing chemistry. Well, chemistry is very interesting, great fun. Yes, but... Well, you go back to Mr. Toad. animation of her kind of... I, I'd rather not, sir. ...down and... Uh, and the, the field mice are so limited, you can see just the plain eyes. There's no eye, eye balls to play with. Similar to Mole, actually. Um, so, and I've worked with characters like that. You've got to kind of get the body language of the head and show what they're thinking. Because eyes are normally very expressive, but when you're limited like that. Uh, and it was right for Costco all to do that, because real field mice are like that. They just have black, little black eyes. Toad, of course, um, has the most expressive eyes. They have lovely big eyes to play with. And I assume, I, just, I can just tell, pretty sure that Paul Berry animated this rabbit as well. <laughs> nice little character. Just sort of, just sort of, um, he's remaining most loyal to Toad. Um, <laughs> and of course Toad's now... I love the animation of the rabbit there, I love him, just sort of joining Toad, really clear poses, and he's thinking. Yes, and the poor rabbit is trying to explain that, that, that Toad's doing something wrong here. Toad doesn't know what he's doing, does he? Beautiful chemistry strategy. I mean, look at that as a prop. How was that done? I would love to know. I would love to know how this is done. I mean, it's all presumably made out of glass, or at least plastic. Um, but how do they do all that liquid in it? If anyone out there knows, please do leave some comments. There's still many things I need to ask, sort of Jackie Cockle and various people. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, he's, he's looking at combining and he says, oh, the label's full of love. So you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, and then another nice track here, as you can hear in the background, an incidental piece called Trick Cyclist. Um, pops up quite a bit in Series 3. Another kind of Toad track. Um, suggest Toad following an enthusiasm um, and of course we've seen Toad use his chemistry set in other episodes um, well prior to this there was a grand annual show where he's making wine and he's pretty much the same chemistry set and uh, later on in Remember Remember which is a fireworks episode I don't think he used the actual the set but he's, he's mixing things and again not knowing what he's doing. I love the smoke there, the steam. So that would have been on glass, placed in front of the camera. You see more of it there, you see it building up. I love the eyes. And here we go, big explosion. Nice lighting effects there and everything coming together really nicely and the rabbit being thrown out on the toe ball. <laughs> and of course we finish on a final scene with as, as always, well, in so many episodes, Ratty Mole and Badger gathered around Toad. In this case, Toad bandaged up. Hopefully, the others would hope that he's going to see the error of his ways. And... Lovely animation with the quivering lip there. So it would have been kind of single frames up and down like that. <laughs> Back to the music trick cyclist there. Lovely animation here, kind of totally acting like cartwheel over the bed there. And the contrast to Toad here and Badger. So Badger's kind of watching there. And Toad absolutely crazy. <laughs> you think he's just gone mad. <laughs> so I hinted at fireworks there. Now, the fireworks episode is actually a series four episode. Um, so we assume maybe Coscavore had, or Brian Truman had the idea of a fireworks episode coming up at some point. Um, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't happen until series four. So um, don't know why that is, but so yeah, yeah, there were some continuity um, issues you could say in the series where you, you expect kind of a fireworks episode to follow this, but in fact it was the next one was uh, Badger's Remedy completely different episode, a very serious episode that we'll review at some point. It's actually an autumn episode. Huh? So there we go, school days. So I do like that one. I'm sure many people who grew up with the videos uh, would remember that from that VHS tape. Um, it was released many years later on DVD. Uh, this, uh, these DVDs are actually available by um, subscription from the internet from a company called Time Life. 
So you could only get them by um, kind of committing to them. So one every, I think it was one every month or so. I think it was something like that. And they were expensive, so they're very hard to find now. But yeah, it was released in this one called Wise Old Badger. <laughs> Four episodes. And they're digitally remastered on these, so look stunning. Actually look better than they did in the box set. Anyway, so, uh, it was over quite quickly, wasn't it? <laughs> um, School Days, love that one. Um, just a nice episode featuring the four of them. You know, no weasels. Um, I do love the weasels, but sometimes it's nice to have a break from them. Uh, but again, it's still a very funny episode with some superb, superb animation. Uh, and just a nice... Nice episode that kind of you feel that it's good weather and it is at the moment. I'm looking out the window now. Um, lovely spring. We've had some rainy weather, uh, even though it's spring and it's May, but it's it's yeah, lovely jolly weather. Uh, next week we do have Paper Chase, which is one of my all-time favourites. Another one I would call an absolute classic because it featured on that Spring Follies episode. Um, sorry, video, and very appropriate because uh, Race for Life is actually happening um, today here in in my hometown in Harlow. Uh, no one out there at the moment, but the Race for Life is happening in the, the, the town park just, just, just next door to us. Uh, and it continues throughout uh, in nationally um, through to next weekend. So it feels very appropriate <laughs> that we're doing Paper Chase uh, next week. So thanks for joining me. As always, please do keep the comments and subscriptions coming. Um, and uh, I'm enjoying doing them. I hope you're enjoying watching them. I want to say a thank you also to all my students. I know a lot of you are... Uh, uh, subscribing to me now and watching uh, so please do leave your comments as well uh, thank you for watching and uh, I will see you next week with Paper Chase all the best and enjoy the good weather bye bye then.